Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at uh, greatdetectives.net. Give us a call, 208-991-4783, and uh, become one of our friends over on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Uh, well, uh, we continue our listener support campaign. Encourage everyone who uh, is able to go to support.greatdetectives.net and uh, help out the show. Um, and uh, want to say thanks to uh, Robert and David for a sending along donation, and we'll be sending their choice of extras uh, to them. We uh, normally, uh, for all donations of seven dollars or more, we send access to our premium site. Uh, but uh, for uh, during the listener support campaign, which ends this Saturday, March the 3rd, uh, we will provide a bonus gift. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Bob has emailed us, and he's asked for uh, episodes of the Twilight Zone radio series. And so every donation of $20 or more, we can send you uh, your choice of any two episodes of the Twilight Zone radio series that are available uh, through audible.com or uh, your choice of several colonial radio theater dramas uh, at the $50 level we can uh, send you an, if you're in the US or Canada we can send you an autographed copy of Tales of the Dim Night uh, my wife my book that my wife and I wrote uh, and there's a full list of all of the uh, bonuses available at support.greatdetectives.net let me know what you want when you donate and we will go ahead and get that to you well, this is the last episode we have of Christopher London and the second to last episode of the series. Uh, this one is from May 29th, uh, 1950, so some time has passed since the previous uh, episode. Uh, and the reason for the series end uh, was that uh, Glenn Ford's movie career was taking off. And, uh, you know, with radio in decline and a movie career out there for him, it made sense to focus on uh, movies. So the show would end after 19 weeks the very next week. Fortunately, we don't have any of the titles between last week's show and this one. Uh, this episode is from May 29th, 1950, and this one is called The System, A Code for Murder. In New York, a famous composer sips his brandy and dies. The lovely lady vanishes. On the French Riviera, a childish tune is played again and again behind the locked door. Jagged pieces of a horrible puzzle fitted together into a pattern of murder by Christopher London. The National Broadcasting Company presents Christopher London, created especially for radio by the world's most widely read mystery writer, Earl Stanley Gardner. Transcribed, produced, and directed by William N. Robson. And starring Mr. Glenn Ford. I am Christopher London, who can't even take a little walk in the moonlight with a beautiful woman without finding a dead body in his path. Everyone else seems to be able to do the average sort of thing go to a show or a concert without the man in the next seat winding up with a stiletto on his back, but not me, no. no. Like that night, I went to Carnegie Hall to hear the new piano concerto by my old friend, Louis Deshaies. Louis was the kind of man you seldom come across anymore, vital despite 60-odd years with an eye for the ladies... Twenty cigars a day, evenings of brandy, roulette, and romance. Well, after the concert, he slipped away with me to a small bar around the corner from Carnegie Hall where we could chat quietly. Oh, Christopher, how I detest to listen to my own music. Oh, nerve-wracking. Ah, oh, it will be good to get away, to relax. No music, no work. Where no are you one... going? Wandelka. She has written me to spend a holiday at her chateau in Monte Carlo. Juan Delca, the pianist? Yes. Oh, that's a great artist. I've heard her play. Oh, one of the most remarkable women of our time. Even now, at 60, she can captivate the heart of men half her age. The vitality, the allure. I, I fell in love with her twice in my life. 
Once at 16 and again at 40. I even wanted to marry her. Me, Louis de Chaise, willing to marry. But I couldn't afford her. Extravagance? Oh, that is another statement. <laughs> Why, Delka, she lives to the hilt. Compared to her, I'm middle class. Oh, how that woman lives. The fortune she's lost at roulette. The racing car she has bought. The chateau she's lived in. Oh, she sounds wonderful. At 60, she is not only a great pianist, linguist, mathematician, poet. You know, you sound as though you're still in love with her. It's too bad you couldn't afford her. Oh, need I tell you how little a composer like me earns? Few concerts, the sale of records. That is all. Oh, for a man with my taste, it has been hard. But now, all will be changed. Christopher, when I return, I should be a wealthy man. Oh, how are you going to manage that? Uh, <laughs> I cannot tell you, Christopher. I beg your pardon. Huh? Is this seat taken? Oh, no. Uh, do sit down, mademoiselle. I was at the concert. Oh, it was a beautiful concerto, Mr. Duchesne. Oh, oh, you know who I am. Oh, oh how nice. And you are? Oh, just. Yes. A girl called Anne. Anne, uh, this is Mr. London. Hello. Hello. Another round, gents. How about you, young lady? Uh, yes, the young lady may have whatever she wishes. Oh, oh no, I only intend. Oh, but I insist. Oh, thank you. A vermouth cassis, please. Another cognac for me. Uh, Christopher? Uh, no, no, thanks. Anne, may I tell you that you are the most beautiful young lady that I've met in many a dull year? Christopher, isn't she exquisite? Very. Yes, I'm partial to lavender eyes and red hair. Thank you. Perhaps you are musician. Oh, no. I'm... I'm nobody. Oh. It's strange, my, my sitting here with two men who lead such exciting lives. I, too. Heavens, I know the name Christopher London. Oh. There's your drinks. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, yes. To your concerto, Mr. Duchesne. To your beauty, Mademoiselle Anne. Thank you. Oh, look. Isn't that a turby over there? Where? Over there, in the corner. Turn around and tell me. No resemblance, but it is not a turby. Mm, no, I, I see now it isn't. Oh, dear, what time is it? Hmm? Oh, let's see. It's, uh, oh, 11.40. Oh, I must make a phone call. Do excuse me for a second. I'll be right back. Oh, la, 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 la. Oh, such beauty. Oh, that soft skin. That red hair. That red hair is one of the finest wigs I've ever seen. Oh, Christopher, ridiculous. No, somewhere I've met her before. But where? You cynical young man. Oh, no, my friend. You are so wrong. You are... Honey, I, 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 I'm dizzy, dizzy. What's the matter? My eyes, I... What? Huh? Christopher! Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait. Oh, Christopher! Oh, Christopher! What's wrong with him, mister? He's dead. She? How? Uh, you better not wash that cognac glass. I have a hunch the police will find poison in it. Getting us to turn our backs. That's the oldest trick in the world. We fell for it. That, that... Redhead? Yeah, yeah, the beautiful, phony redhead. You were right, Mr. London. Poison. Uh, how about the girl, Inspector? Not a trace. What gets me is the motive. Why bump off an old guy who writes music? <laughs> Maybe the music was real lousy, huh? No, no, somebody didn't want him to go abroad. Uh, that's tough luck. Europe must be swell this time of year. Yes, I, I think it will be. Well, what do you mean? I'll see you when I get back. Where are you going? To the south of France. There's a woman I ought to meet. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's different. I thought you were going on business. I am, Inspector. Grim business. It's always hard to lose a friend, especially when his music has brought joy to a world which needs all the joy it can get. I was angry, cold angry. Poor Louis de Chaise. Never again to see his old love, the great, the famous Wandelka. And to come back a wealthy man. What did it all mean? Why should he die at the hands of a girl with lavender eyes and a lilting voice? So I boarded a plane for France. <laughs> And the next night, I walked into the fabulous casino at Monte Carlo. I went from table to table, looking for the artist and woman known as Wandelka. When suddenly... Hello, London. Huh? Well, 
Phil Zeruccio, huh? <laughs> well, how time flies. Last time I saw you, a, a grand jury was indicting you for murder. Yeah, but I got a good mouthpiece. How's Broadway? Yeah, a lot safer since you were deported, Phil. I got news for you, London. I ain't particularly delighted to see you here. Mm-hmm. Afraid I'll spoil some little project you're working on? Listen, I'm a respectable businessman here. Bought myself a chain of restaurants. Pure as the driven snow, you might say, speaking of me. I bet. Probably every politician from Marseille to Rome is bribed up to their beards. Talk sweet, London. Better yet, don't talk. Just beat it. Get out of Monaco. Try Bulgaria or Iceland. You know, I've often wondered, Zeruccio, did you really have 40 guys killed off like the DA said? Or was it all of us? I'm warning you, London, stop needling. I got pull in Europe. I can have you out of here in a day. Keep your nose clean and stay out of my hair. I knew Phil Zeruccio. Compared to him, Lucky Luciano and Lepke were sissies. Or was he on the level about turning over a new leaf? And what was he doing here in a plaid dinner jacket, wandering about the casino of Monte Carlo? Did he know the girl of the lavender eyes? Had he ever heard of one Delta? I strolled out into the gardens, thinking, thinking... Penny for your thoughts, Kit. What? Oh, well, Professor Sullivan. Oh, bless you, Kit. It's good to see you. I've missed you dreadfully. And how did you know I'd be here? Intuition, my now, friend. Wait a minute. Don't kid me, Professor. Every time I'm working on a case, you pop up. Havana, Paris, everywhere I go. Ah, but you pay me so well, Kit. Now, can I do any favors now for you? I'm your humble servant. You can trust me. And, oh, yes, always for a price. <laughs> You been in jail since I last saw you? Oh, only a fortnight in Algiers. Oh, Kit, Algerian prisons are gloomy places. <laughs> well, I suppose I've got to let you help me. Yes, yeah, that's right. You're my conscience, Kit. Mm. You always pay me to do something legal and save me from evil association. I have a proposition. Ah, oh, those words are like rose petals. How much? Oh, Fifty. What do I steal? Do you know a woman called Juan Delka? Oh, yes, a great woman. Great pianist. A beautiful... Take me to her chateau. Oh, now, I'd be cheating you if I did that. See, the poor lady was... Did you say was? Yes. May the saints cherish her. Juan Delka died yesterday. Tomorrow morning is her funeral. Behind this tombstone. I dislike graveyards intensely, but this funeral fascinates me. I wonder who are those two mourners? Hmm? Oh, they are her only relatives, her sister and her niece. I came from Poland only recently. Uh-huh. I wonder what they look like. I wish they'd raise up their veils. Oh, that's better. Oh, thank you. Well, the mother must have been a beauty in her day. Wondelka was even more beautiful, at 60. Her only relatives, huh? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. She never married, did she? Oh, the niece is exquisite. Now, there now. Isn't she the most beautiful brunette you've ever seen? So she just came from Poland, did she? Yes. Hmm. Well, the day before yesterday, I saw her sitting at a bar on 56th Street in New York in a red wig. Oh, that's impossible. Now, she came from Poland. Oh, Professor, it grieves me to tell you this, but you're a liar. Oh, Kit, if you didn't pay me so well, I'd be hurt to the quick. Now, how well do you really know these two women? Come on, now, tell the truth. I've never spoken a word to her. For $50 more, would you tell me the real truth? Oh, well, in that case... I thought so. Cash... Oh, Professor, Professor, oh, you're a rascal. All right, here you are. Good, good. Now, the truth is this. Those charming women pay me to stay in this town so that I can notify them should anyone try and get near one Delka's chateau. Why are they so eager to keep people away from that house? Who knows? Perhaps, I'll merely say, perhaps, one Delka is not in that coffin at all. I 
I've got another pass key here. It might do it. It, it will get into trouble entering without permission. Now, you're a stickler for ethics at the wrong time, Professor. There now. That does it. Well, this is quite a place. Yes, it dates back to Marie Antoinette. Uh, I wonder where the servants are. You know, that's a strange thing, Kit. A few days after the two women arrived here, not a servant could be located. Oh, naturally. Uh, where could one Delka be? I don't know. No, that, I swear, is true. Uh, uh, I wonder where that staircase leads over there. Hmm? Oh, that's to the bedrooms. All right, let's try it. Huh? Look, the uh, women will be coming back from the funeral soon. Courage, Professor. Well, this, uh, this staircase was built too steep, Kit. Behind that door. Perhaps that's Wandelka. Undoubtedly. Let's see here. And that's locked. Uh, Wandelka. <clears throat> Wandelka, is that you? Yeah, it gives me goose pimples to hear that. A great pianist playing like a child. Feeble-minded, insane, maybe. Yes. And why is she being kept a prisoner in her own house? Now, look, I'll give you another 50. No, if you were to offer me a million, I couldn't tell you, Kit. Now, those women tell me very little. Wandelka. Wandelka. Look, I know you're being held a prisoner. I've come to help you. Can you hear me? It's like a lunatic asylum. Come on, let's get out of here. Yes, yes, sir. They'll be back soon, and I want to meet those lovely ladies on a different basis. But, Kit, what does one Delco mean to you? A friend of mine loved her. I have uh, come to offer my condolences at your loss. I'm from America. I I played many times in the Philharmonic Orchestra when Wondelka was the soloist. Won't you come in? Mama, this is an American gentleman who knew poor auntie. He has come to pay his respects. You come at unhappy time. Won't you sit down? Thank you, madame. Your sister was one of the great musicians, one of the great women of the century. She inspired me to love music and to love life. She will be remembered as was Bernhardt and Duza and Madame Curie. Oh, I am glad to know someone young and a foreigner still holds her memory dear. What was the cause of her death, madame? Pneumonia. She insists on going to casino. She loves to play roulette. And that night it rained, it rained. And, and she catch cold. She was so weak. And... Oh, don't cry, Mama. The past is over. Why are there no servants here to attend to your needs, madame? We wish to sit here alone with our grief. Oh, but we are being ungracious, Anna. The wine. Ah, your name is Anna. Yes, my sister had always a great wine cellar. You stay here, Anna, and entertain the gentleman. I will get the wine. Why you look at me like that, monsieur? I came to find death. And I found beauty. Thank you. It is so seldom one sees a Polish girl with hair so black. My father was part Italian. Oh, I see. You know, were Renoir alive today, he would wish to paint you. Your coloring is exquisite. The black, black hair, the lavender eyes. You make love to me, monsieur. You choose a most unhappy time. Oh, but when a man is swept off his feet, love does not wait on birth or death. I had heard how impetuous Americans were. I... Oh, no, no. What would my mother say? Oh, she's still in the wine cellar. You are wicked. Oh? Well, then. Winky. Yes. The name of a saint, but 
you are, Neil. You Yet you are charming. Anna. Mm. Anna. Oh, Anna, I could compose a tone poem to that name. Oh, please, Mother is coming back. Oh, Mother has no sense of timing. Oh, those steps are hard on old women. Mm. Oh, here, Anna. Pour the gentleman his wine. Taste it. And tell me if you have ever had a finer amoroso. Yes, drink, monsieur. Aren't you joining me? Not just now. Oh, but I insist your daughter at least take part in an old American custom. Uh? Uh, yes, it's called the loving cup. Now, when a man meets a girl as lovely as your daughter, he asks her, he asks her to drink first from his glass. Anna is too young to drink. Oh, but surely an exception can be made here. I accept your flattery, monsieur. However... It is not flattering. No, to look at you is to have some of the chill taken from the memory of your dead aunt. Now, wait. Don't I hear a piano being played somewhere? Oh, no, young man. Imagination plays tricks, you know. My poor sister. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I must have imagined it. Come, Anna. You shall have the first sip from my glass. I cannot allow my daughter... I insist. It is difficult, young man, to know where flattery ends and rudeness begins with you. Surely you can't object to drinking your own wine, Anna. Or can you? Oh, of course not. No, no, certainly not. Well, then. Anna, no. That's a pretty phony accent you girls are wearing. All right, wise guy. Now, just stand quite ah, still. What a smart little revolver. It'll do the work, Professor. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Tie this fool up in the cellar. Oh. Poor kid. You shouldn't have come here. Oh, Professor, sometimes you shake my faith in the human race. <laughs> You're listening to Christopher London, starring Glenn Ford. You know, Professor, that gun pointing at me is superfluous. Ha <laughs> ha, bless you, kid. I'll take no chances with you. Oh, where's your shame? I mean, taking my money and then telling those women about me. Well, it's difficult to have both a conscience and a bank book at the same time. Uh, what wouldn't you do for money? Offhand, I can't really imagine. <laughs> Uh, tell me, how much did they pay you to double-cross me? 50,000 francs. Well, that's hardly worth the effort, the way francs are these days. Now, don't undermine my confidence in international finance, kid. Do you know, I pity you. Here you'll sit and starve while they go on trying to get a secret from her. What secret? I wish I knew. I asked Lottie, that's the girl who calls herself Anna. Lottie's from Newark, New Jersey. Worked in a burlesque for a while. Uh, I'll bet she did. I asked her what secret would one doker have. She only snarled at me. It's amazing how beautiful women can snarl. Mm. Louis de Chaise was poisoned at the bar by Lottie. Why? He was coming to visit Juan Delca. He was sure he'd strike it rich. Now, what had Juan Delca written him? I mean, why should she, of all people, be kept a prisoner? Why the fake funeral? Too bad you'll never know the answer. You think they're asleep by now? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll think of that wonderful woman, Professor. Haven't you any sentiment? Well, for $500 in American money, I could weep buckets. And at the same time, cut your cords. 200 Five. Either my price or I sit here and I starve. Now, which is it going to be? Oh, well, naturally, I can't let you die. I like the deal. Uh, there's no use unless I get to that room upstairs. Oh, by the merest chance, I picked the old lady's pocket. What? Yes, I have the key. And for another 50... No, 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 no. Oh, well, what can I do? My heart can't allow you to be eaten by rats. No. Wait, here. Yeah. I'll cut you free. That's it. Well, you're a noble soul, Professor. Yes. Now, here's the key. Now, we go upstairs to find one Delka. Oh, not me. No, I've had enough for one day. I'll go back and have sweet dreams in your hotel room. Now then, give me the money. Oh, I haven't it on me. How about tomorrow? Fortunately, in the past, your credit has been good. Well, Kit, we come to the parting of the ways. I back to town, and you too. Yes, yes. Who knows where? Madame Mondo? 
Mundelka? Madam Mundelka. Who are you? I don't know you. Go away. I don't know you. Oh, please try to understand what I'm saying. It's very important. I've come to get you away from these women. I don't know you. Yes, yes, I know. I don't... I, I, all right, I know. I know about that. Now, we're going to get you out of here. I'll take you to a hospital. I'll take care of you. You'll be well again. Oh, please, will you, will you stop playing and listen to me? My name is Christopher London. I'm a friend of Louis de Chaise. Ah, oh, good. I had to make sure. Thank heaven you have come. Uh, the fools, the arrogant fools. Who did they think they were browbeating some poor little old lady? How easy it was to pretend I was out of my mind. You say you know my friend Louis? Yes. He was all set to sail for France when he was murdered. Murdered? Oh, no. Poor, poor man. How horrible. Yes, well, I hated to tell you. But... Well, at my age, one's friends die one by one. Who killed him? That girl. It was that girl, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, poor Louis. <laughs> he was always a boy at heart about a pretty face. Like I am about a handsome face. I must say, young man, I could not ask for a finer-looking rescuer than you. How romantic of you to bother about an old lady like me. Well, not really an old lady. Don't be too optimistic. We've got to get out of here. This is a dangerous gang. Yes, I see them all hanged yet. Or oh, the guillotine. Her pretty head chopped off. Oh, my poor Louis. Tell me, why did they kill him? He was the only one to whom I confided my secret. Secret? Young man, I have three passions. Attractive men, the playing of the piano, and the roulette wheel. The first two, I mastered. But the third, now at last, I have, after years, I have discovered the perfect mathematical system to break the bank at Monte Carlo. Oh? This gang found out about my system. Zutelo, they take over my chateau one day, pretend to be my relatives, get rid of my friends, get rid of my servants, and I am their captive. But I do not tell them the system. I destroy all papers, all calculations. Oh, but you must have one copy hidden. Ah, I have. Now, look, this is no time to play... This a... is it. This is the system. Well, what do you mean? Play the tune in the key of E. You sing C flat as the code for number one. That's the old musical code. Naturally. Played and varied five times. When it's decoded, the entire numerical system is spelled out. I've kept it in my mind all this time. Played it so I would not forget. Okay, wise guy, I told you to keep your hands off. Hello, Zeruccio. You're at the bottom of all this, huh? Oh, what are you going to do? Don't beat me again. Shut up, you idiotic fool. Stop playing and come across with that system. What system? I'm just an old lady who... Oh, God, my arm, oh, my arm. Smart work, one second. Ah. Oh, no, you don't, Zeruccio. Oh, my way, London. Not so fast. Oh. Get his gun. I have it. Shall I shoot them both? It would be a pleasure. You're not insane. No. And my fingers are exceptionally strong, thanks to Mozart. You silly girl. I'll stand guard, Monsieur London. You get the police. What about the other woman? Where is she? It does not matter. If she shows up, I'll take care of her. If she does not show up, the police, they will find her. Well, you're everything that Louis said, madame. Brave, wise, and beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. I think soon I shall play a concert dedicated to you, monsieur. Oh, if I were 20 years younger. You are eternally young, madame. What? Well, hold up your hands. Oh, you caught them. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid your heroics have come a little late, professor. Oh, Wondelka, give him your gun. He will stand guard until I come back with the police. You must be weary. Weary? Nonsense. After you are done with the police, come to the casino. I will be there playing my system. I'll treat you to champagne and introduce you to all the pretty girls. Oh, so that was it. A session to break the bank, eh? 
But uh, what is the system? You'd like to know, Professor? Oh, yes. Very much, huh? Very much, yes. Yeah, I see. Well, give him your system, Wondelka. Allegro con molto. That was Christopher London, starring Glenn Ford. Transcribed, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. And created especially for radio by the world's most widely read mystery writer, Earl Stanley Gardner. Tonight's play was written by Bernard Schoenfeld with a musical score composed and conducted by Van Cleave. Included in Mr. Ford's company were Ben Wright, Eleanor Audley, Ramsey Hill, Jeanette Nolan, Ted DeCorsia, Georgia Ellis, and Rick Vallon. Throughout the week, NBC brings you the best adventure mystery dramas on the air. You'll hear action-packed, fast-moving plots to hold your interest right up to the smashing climax on such thrilling programs as Big Town, Mr. District Attorney, The Big Story, and Dragnet, every week on most of these NBC stations. On Dragnet, you'll hear the documented cases from the Los Angeles police files. The Big Story brings you true tales from the front pages of America's newspapers. Mr. District Attorney, the champion of the people, takes you through an exciting episode in the conviction of a criminal. Welcome back. Well, if you're a fan of the man called X, uh, this may almost seem like a man called, uh, a man called X script, uh, with, uh, the professor acting a lot like, uh, Pagon, uh, Velschmidt. Uh, and, uh, there's a good reason for that. This was actually, uh, originally written as a World War II era, uh, man called X script. Uh, it was, uh, modified somewhat, you know, uh, to fit the time that we were no longer in, uh, wartime. So, you know, we had some changes in terms of the actual, uh, villain of the piece. But, uh, this was actually, uh, originally, the script was used, for a 1944 man called X uh, script. Uh, and of course, one big difference here, when you listen to the later man called X scripts, uh, uh, Pagon certainly is uh, not above, uh, uh, you know, extorting as much money as he can from Mr. X, but will rarely uh, do something that could double cross him or do uh, him serious harm. Uh, there were some parts of the script that probably made more sense with the uh, man called X, such as the professor showing up uh, everywhere he went. Now, unless something radically changed in the tw uh, 11 episodes we missed, uh, we hadn't seen any of that with uh, uh, Christopher London. And of course, uh, you know, you always wonder, how did he, you know, was is he operating in New York when he was started out operating in San Francisco? Uh, so I'm not certain whether this was as a sudden a, a change in the script for the listeners of the day uh, as it is for us uh, listening to it later, or if they had kind of made some gradual changes in that direction. All right, well, now we turn to some listener comments and uh, feedback. Uh, and Jim uh, comments regarding our last video theater episode, Martin Kane, The Doctored Will. Uh, and he says, Great show. Really like how they handled the commercials. Wish they would do it the same today. Well, thanks so much, Jim. And, uh, there, there, you know, if the, uh, in, uh, program commercials, uh, with, uh, cast, uh, endorsing are done right, I think that they were uh, very well done. Honestly, uh, when I'm listening to the Burns and Allen, uh, wor uh World War II era programs, uh, with, uh, Swan Soap as the sponsor, uh, Bill Goodwin's, uh, commercials are absolutely, uh, fantastic. They're a highlight of the show, uh, as much as anything else. Um, but, uh, I think, you know, obviously the fact that, uh, most shows don't have a single sponsor, uh, these days has kind of made it, uh, has kind of made it hard, uh, to do that sort of thing. But I do agree with, uh, Jim. If it were possible, I, I think I would prefer that to the, uh, sort of, uh, commercials we get today. 
All right, well, that will do it for today, and that will do it for Christopher London. Join us next week. We're going to start into Poirot and Old Time Radio, and we'll begin with an episode of the Mercury uh, Theater. Uh, you definitely don't want to miss that. Uh, in the uh, meanwhile, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectors.net. Give us a call at 208-991-4783. And remember to support the show, support.greatdetectors.net. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.